Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Something a little different today, not strictly history per se, uh, but I've always been a big fan of, there's a couple of travel channels I just really, really enjoy. Walter's World is one, uh, Kara and Nate is another one I really enjoy. And Now that I've begun to do a little more travel myself, especially in places like Europe, um, I don't watch them as much as I used to, but I watched them a lot early on, especially when I was learning all I could about traveling places. And he does a lot of these videos like telling you the do's and don'ts of visiting different places. And I stumbled upon the fact that about four months ago, he did one on the don'ts of visiting Ohio. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm very curious to see how somebody who isn't from Ohio portrays us. And talks about the don'ts and i need to recognize up front and i don't know what all he'll talk about but understand ohio is a big place we're a small state compared to some states like we're not texas or california or alaska uh, or i think we're like 35th or 36th in size so from that standpoint we're small but comparatively speaking to say nations in europe we're pretty big uh ohio is bigger than scotland and, you know, so from one end of Ohio, like where I live, to get down to, say, Cincinnati is like four, four and a half hours. And the culture south of Columbus is so incredibly different than the culture, say, here in Northeast Ohio. Northeast Ohio, we're more of like the Yankee culture. We're more probably associated with like Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, Virginia, than like Northern Virginia, than we are with Southern Ohio. Southern Ohio, you get past Columbus it's a southern accent like people talk like they do in kentucky um the culture is very different there it's very flat there where it's very hilly where i live a um, lot of differences so i'm curious to see what he has to say i'll put the link in the description if you want to check out his channel he's got stuff on pretty much every place he's been he's been traveling for decades it's pretty interesting stuff so thought i'd do something a little different a little lighthearted today and you guys know how much i love to talk about my home state of ohio so let's dive in and see what he's got to say Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here in Dublin, Ohio. Dublin, as outside the of Columbus. Of visiting Ohio, and I thought a field of corn is a perfect place to begin our video. And my first don't for you when it comes to Ohio is something that you don't just have to worry about when you're in Ohio, but when you travel. I like that they're showing Wendy's. Wendy's is from Columbus. That's where Wendy's originated. Arby's originated here in the Youngstown area. Uh, so those are our two contributions to fast food. That and. Uh, they have Skyline Chili down in the southern part of the state, but we don't have that up here. Around the world and you see people from Ohio, and that is don't freak out when people make a small flash mob when they hear O-H and then oh. go I-O. Or that is definitely a thing that we do. <laughs> Absolutely. One of the unique things about Ohio, okay, when it comes to sports, pretty much the entire state, are Ohio State fans. Now, there are fans of other teams, like there's Michigan fans that live here, things like that. But pretty much everybody in the state of Ohio is an Ohio State fan. They're also a fan of whoever their local university is. So, like here, we have Youngstown State. It's where my wife and sister both went to school. Um, so, we, you know, Youngstown State won some national championships in the football championship subdivision. Um, so, we're YSU fans, but we're also Ohio State fans. Uh, and yeah, OH is something we do. One person yells OH, the other person responds with IO. We even form it with our hands, O-H-I-O. -O. It's definitely a thing we do. For Ohio, and they'll use something like the corn stalk here to be the I in Ohio. And you'll see people make the O yep. Ohio. And, totally. you know, and even if you're not an Ohio fan, you're not from Ohio, you see them do it. And sometimes they'll suck you in, but don't freak out with the little Ohio flash mobs you'll see when you're here. Now, I'm- A hundred percent true, absolutely. I'm actually just a little bit north of the Ohio State University. And I think another don't that people need to know is, don't forget the the in front of the Ohio State University, yep. because the people from here won't let you forget it, okay? And it's emphasized. People remind you of that. You're like, there may be other universities that do that, but there's none I'm aware of. It's definitely the Ohio State University, and people emphasize that. If you watch NFL games and you see an Ohio State grad that's playing and they're t they're introducing themselves in like the pregame intros, a lot of them will say the Ohio State University. Okay, and, and I think another thing is important, one that I really needed to know and I really forgot when I got dressed this morning is don't wear blue and yellow when you come to Ohio because those colors are not cool, especially if you're in Columbus and near the Ohio State University. 
because nobody likes Michigan. And yes, I know those Michigan fans will say, actually, it's blue and maize. Look. And we don't even say that team name. I know I did earlier. We call them TTUN, the team up north. Nobody cares, Michigan. Nobody cares. But just know, if you're in Columbus, you're wearing blue, blue and yellow. It's not going to go over well. All right? Now, so far, everything's pretty Columbus central. There's a lot more to Ohio than just Columbus. But I get it. It's our largest city. It's our capital. All right. So let's go see some more less rainy parts of Ohio, hopefully, to continue I wonder what that list. noise was. Now, another thing that you might worry about your teeth safety is don't worry about busting a tooth when you bite into a Buckeye. So They're if you're soft. not sure what a Buckeye is, when you're looking at the candy Buckeye, I should say, is this is a treat from here in Ohio. Is that really unique to Ohio? I just assumed that was kind of a thing everybody did. Buckeyes, are, yeah, that's a big time thing that people do here. And I also found out recently that having a huge table full of cookies at a wedding is very unique to the Youngstown and Pittsburgh area. So where I live and then from here down about an hour to Pittsburgh, basically that's kind of the corridor along Interstate 76 where people do big cookie tables full of cookies, like thousands of cookies at a wedding. I just assumed everybody did that. And what it is, it's a peanut butter ball covered in chocolate and it looks like a Buckeye, right? And, and it's something that you will get a lot of places. I know I had a number of Ohio State grads that were my instructors back in college. And whenever Ohio State and Illinois played, they would always bring us Buckeyes to class. And since it was that time and Ohio State kind of destroyed Illinois every time, we got to at least enjoy something from the destruction not that really a fan our of Buckeyes, team got the, from the Ohio the State cookie. Buckeyes, so there is that. Now, my next don't for you is don't think that North Carolina is truly the birthplace of aviation right. because the Wright brothers, they're from here in Ohio. If you Wright brothers, Neil Armstrong, John Glenn, Thomas Edison. I mean, we have it all here, right? Yeah, the Wright brothers are from Dayton. That's why um, Wright State University is there. That's why the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is there. They went to North Carolina because it was a good place to do their test flights, but they're definitely, they were bike guys from Ohio. To go to Dayton, they actually have a memorial to them there. And speaking of flying high, another don't I have for you is don't think Florida is the best place to go in the Cedar US. Cedar Point, 100%. Coasters because Cedar Point has been repeatedly named the best amusement park in the world. Absolutely. It's about two hours from here. Uh, if you grow up in Ohio, especially like northern Ohio, even Michigan, Indiana, Cedar Point's the place you go. It's where we went for our band trips. It's where we would go for after prom. It's where we go for our church youth group trips. Cedar Point was like the place to be. Tons of roller coasters there. It's the best amusement park for roller coasters anywhere in the U.S. Anywhere in the is world. Cedar Point. Because it seems like every year they're trying to make the tallest, the fastest, the, the longest roller coaster possible. And I've been going there. Actually, I went there a ton as a kid. That was our summer vacation, going to Sandusky, going to Cedar Point, heading over to Cleveland, heck, going to Toledo. We did Ohio all the time, and that was the highlight was going to Cedar Point. So, so don't think you have to go to Florida for real roller coasters. Cedar Point beats them every time. And they actually have a pretty decent uh, amusement park down outside of uh, Cincinnati as well. It's called Kings Island. Not as good as Cedar Point. Now, another thing where you might think you need to go to another state to enjoy something is don't think the Christmas Story House is no, actually in Indiana because it's not. It's actually in Cleveland. You can actually do a tour of the house from a Christmas Story. You could even spend the night there. But do realize, don't think it's in Indiana. It's right here in Ohio. The the story, the Christmas a Christmas Story, was set in Indiana. But yeah, the house that they filmed all that stuff in is definitely in Cleveland. Now, another thing I think is important for people to realize is when they think of the Midwest, and I think Ohio, like Ohio Midwest, it must be one of those landlocked states. Well, my next don't Lake Erie, is baby. don't think that Ohio is landlocked. Lake Erie out there is fantastic. And yes, there are beaches you can go and enjoy. It's great for sailing. I mean, every summer. So that's Cleveland right there. And this building right here, which is the one that always gets lit up kind of like, uh, in New York City, how they light up the Empire State Building. We do that with Terminal Tower, which is this building here. And for, for a long, long time, there was some kind of a law in Ohio that no building could be built taller than Terminal Tower. Uh, but the Key Bank Building is now much taller than Terminal Tower, and that is our tallest building in the state of Ohio. And it's usually one of the first landmarks you see when you come into the city. There's the Browns Stadium right there. 
summer, we'd be in Sandusky. We would have Cedar Point. We'd go to the water parks and we'd go sailing in Lake Erie. We go and that's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right there, the Brown Stadium. And yeah, I mean, listen, Cleveland's got some stuff going for it. I know it's got a bad rap. The river, the Cuyahoga River caught on fire in the 70s and things like that. But downtown Cleveland is a nice place. Um, you know, obviously they've had some big time events there lately. A Republican convention was there in 2016. And it sounds like from all accounts, everybody thought it went really, really well there. So, And I got to be in Cleveland for that. So that was pretty cool. Put in Bay and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of other little places along the way. But don't think there's no beaches because you can get out there and you can enjoy the water would there are beaches but lake erie is not exactly the warmest thing in the world to swim in i never really was a big fan you're here in ohio it's not just cornfields now when you are driving around in ohio um i do have to tell you one thing is don't call it soda they call it pop that's here. right so when you're grabbing a coke it's you're pop. grabbing a mountain dew or or whatever just know it's pop and my dear friend Kara Deer and I would fight over this summer after summer. And I think, tell me what you guys call it where you are, but I know like in a lot of places in the South, they just call it Coke. No matter what it is, it's Coke. When I lived in Southern Indiana, it was Coke, no matter what it was. We would talk about soda versus pop. She's like, why you call it pop? Like, why you call it soda? Because it's soda, not pop. It's pop. But here, it's definitely pop when you're in Ohio. Now, another don't I have for you is don't forget to thank Ohio the next time you dip your French fries into your Wendy's, Wendy's Frosty. Cleveland, because er, Ohio is the birthplace of Wendy's. And while you're driving around Ohio... Don't forget Arby's, Walter's World. Come on, man. We got Arby's, too when you're dipping your fries into your Frosty, I think there's another don't I have for you, and that is don't think that the roads won't get you when you're here in Ohio. Whether it's the potholes or the road construction or the cost of the turnpike, the roads here can get you. But what's cool is actually the drivers in Ohio are actually pretty good drivers. So it's not the Ohio people that drive you nuts when you're driving on the highway on 90 or whatever. It's like the people from Indiana that just park in the left lane and go over there. Yeah. Yeah. I, worst drivers I've experienced in the U.S. Um, Orlando, which again, can't really blame on Orlando. Orlando's got a lot of tourists. Uh, but Orlando, Boston, and northern alabama like in the huntsville area for some reason always really bad drivers there um yeah we ha we do get the potholes a lot it's because of the weather uh, because we we get such a change in weather all the time that the roads are constantly expanding and contracting and you get those potholes and then in the spring they try to fix it all but it, it's pretty brutal and the turnpike runs across the north uh, it's 76 and then it becomes 80 and 90 all across the north uh, we've got 71 that runs across the middle of the state um, 77 going north and south. Now, another don't I have for you come here is don't forget to bring some outdoor gear when you're here because there's state parks you can go visit. You can go all along the beaches and things. You can go to Hawking Hills State Park. Hawking Hills. I've never been to Hawking Hills. It's down in the southern part of the state, but I, I've seen amazing pictures and beautiful scenery there. Uh, waterfalls and you know cabins and really really nice place. Nelson Kennedy Ledges State Park. I mean there's a national park that's right outside of Cleveland. Cuyahoga National Park. You can go there and you can hike on the ledges. So he was talking about Nelson Kennedy Ledges. That's like 40 minutes from my house. And I haven't been there since I was a kid but it's pretty cool. Take a train through there. You can do bike trails. I mean there's a lot of state parks to go and enjoy and city parks to enjoy when you're here in Ohio. So don't think you're just going to be going Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland. No, go to some of those state parks, go to the national park this year and enjoy those as well. Now, whenever I travel, obviously food becomes an important thing for me. And one don't, don't you I mention have Chili. don't skip out on the ice cream. If you can get Grater's ice cream or Jenny's ice cream. Now, there's the first thing I've heard that I don't know a thing about. I've never heard of either one of those. Now, Handles is what we have here. It started here in the Youngstown area. Uh, and I've heard stories of very famous Hollywood types who will get Handel's ice cream shipped to them. Um, but I've never heard of Jenny's or Grater's. Ice cream, those are the two Ohio staples, and they are really, Must really, be in another part really of the state. good. And yes, they do have a Buckeye flavored ice cream, so you can have that. I personally like their Samora one, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Grater's guy. Some people are Jenny's people. I'm a Grater's guy. But honestly, you will have really good ice cream when you're here. Another food thing that people usually talk about when they come to Ohio is the chili. And my there don't for you is don't get shocked when you see them pouring chili on top of spaghetti noodles and then topping it with cheese. Totally a Southern Ohio thing. That is a Cincinnati thing. We do not 
We do not recognize that. We do not claim that. I never understood that. Please. That's Chili Three Way. And if you're in Cincinnati, you're by Cincinnati or other parts of Ohio, you'll see Skyline Chili. And people will tell you, oh, you got to get Skyline Chili. And and my, my don't for the chili thing, aside from don't be surprised that happens, is don't be upset if you're not a fan of Skyline Chili. Because for as many people that have told me when we're going to Ohio, you have to have Skyline Chili, the same number of people said, I don't really like it that much. So it's the same thing with there's this uh, this drink from it started out in Kentucky called Ale 8. Uh, and, you know, my family's from Kentucky, but man, I just don't get it at all. And people, there are people that live around me that when they know somebody's going to Kentucky, they'll ask for them to bring a case of Ale 8 back with them. And I think it's gross. It is one of those things, but you should try it when you do come here. Oh, also a side note, if you're in Cincinnati, don't think that the Cincinnati airport is actually in Ohio. Since it's Kentucky. actually in Kentucky. Another <laughs> That's don't what we I call have, that. This is kind of a don't that really should go with any place you go, but don't diss Ohio to the locals. Look, the local people from Ohio, they'll say some bad stuff about Ohio, but it's like, it's our state and we can complain about it. It's like when somebody makes fun of your brother and you're like going to defend them, right? but then you can make fun of your brother, right? We're allowed to make fun of our own state, but you come here and criticize Ohio and make fun of it. Yeah, we will get offensive, uh, offended by that. But you can't. So if you're in Cleveland, you say, oh, the mistake on the lake, they'll be like, nah, man, we're pretty cool. And honestly, Cleveland, when they say Cleveland rocks, it really does. Like Cleveland is awesome from the architect. It's, listen, I, you've all probably heard bad things. Cleveland, it's not a bad city. And I've been to most of the big cities in the United States. It's, it's, pretty nice these days really got a fantastic theater scene downtown uh playhouse square is really nice you got the flats which used to be kind of sketchy but it's a lot better now you got you know the rock and roll hall of fame and uh, the brown stadium and everything there you've got the area around where the uh guardians and uh the Cavs play which is really nice there too it's your rock and roll hall of fame um the, the christmas story house is there i mean it's a really really cool city and you go around Columbus is well worth visiting. I understand why anybody that went to Ohio State, anybody that's from Columbus, defends that city to the end because it's actually a really great place. And Ohio actually is a really, really nice state to visit with the cities to visit, the small towns you can go to. Heck, another don't for you is no matter what town you go to, don't skip out on eating at the local bar because you'll meet some locals, you get to talk to them, you get some great food, and I'll be really a part. Some of the best food where I live is at this little bar called the Ice House. It's good stuff, good food. Part of your experience here in Ohio. But don't diss Ohio. And to go along with that, don't think Ohio doesn't have culture. There are a number of world-class museums and exhibits and places to visit when you are here in Ohio. If you're in Cleveland, the Cleveland Museum of Art has an incredible collection of art. Never you have the been. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that's there. Never if you're going down either. to Columbus, you got the Franklin Park Conservatory and the, the Botanical Gardens there that you can check out. The Center of Science and Industry is really cool. Coastal I mean, is really cool, the Center of Science and Industry. I went there a lot as a kid. Very neat place to visit. Columbus itself is just a really nice town to be. Visit the Ohio State campus. I mean, it's got some really, really wonderful places to visit here and the museums and the sites and heck, there's small town museums here. Here, here where I'm at right now, there's actually a Finnish Heritage Museum. You can hmm. learn about the Finns of Ohio. It's unbelievable, but it's here. And so don't think there's not culture for you to visit when you are here in Ohio. And speaking of culture, when you are here, a lot of people like to go visit the Amish country when they are here in Ohio. And what you don't realize is, as popular as Pennsylvania is with their Amish, there's actually more Amish people here in Ohio than there are in Pennsylvania. And the thing is, I don't know if that's true or not. I guess there's no reason for me to doubt that it is true. But Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is the largest concentration of Amish in one place. And then I think second to that is here in Northeast Ohio. We do have a lot of Amish people in Northeast Ohio. So my don't for that is don't joke around when you see that horse and buggy sign when you're going to be on the road and you're driving around. There's like five counties that have quite a few Amish people in there and you can drive the Amish County Byway. But just just have a heads up because you'll be driving all of a sudden. Yeah, if you look at a map, um, Geauga County, which is just northwest of me, is where a lot of them are. Um, it's just something we kind of accept and, and we see Amish people all, all, all the time. You know, you see them at Walmart and stuff. And, um, they're just part of our community. I don't, it's not really that big a deal to us here because we just know that they're here. Oh my gosh, horse and buggy. 
So do take care when you are driving in Amish country. And when you're there, don't forget to pick up some furniture because man, they make some awesome furniture and they have really good candies as well. So don't- And they're very involved in construction too. A lot of folks here hire the Amish to help with their construction because they're very, very good at it. Don't forget to stop off there as well and enjoy the Amish country. And my last note for you is don't worry about leaving Ohio hungry because when you come here, look, I know I talked about Skyline Chili and I talked about Wendy's, those are fast food things. But for me, coming to Ohio, there's so much great food when you're here and there's a lot of different influences. Like if you're up, if you're, you know, you're by Cleveland, right? You have a lot of Eastern European influence. So mm. yes, the pierogies that are there, the Polish yeah. boy you're gonna have, the kielbasa just in general. I mean, there's a lot of really good Eastern European food. But when you travel around the state, the people have so much down around Columbus, very German influenced uh, in, the, in the Columbus area. A lot of German settlers were there pride in their state. I mean, that's another reason why you don't diss it, because they are very proud of their state. The people take pride in their food and their their communities in their community bar, and their community restaurants. So you actually eat really, really well when you are here. So don't worry about eating. <laughs> you are here because you eat very well. I mean, I'll be honest, Joss and I had the best shrimp and grits we've had of north of the Mason Dixon line ever. And that was in Cleveland. So hmm. when you are here Not in Ohio, make sure you maybe <clears throat> add an extra, you know, hole on your belt a little bit that way uh, to enjoy a bit more of the tasteness, whether it's the ice cream, the chili, the pierogies or whatever. And I really hope you have a great time here. Awesome. That was actually really well done. And for a guy who isn't from here, who travels all over the place and makes these kinds of videos about a lot of different places, he actually, I think, did pretty well with understanding Ohio and our culture and our places and things like that. That was pretty cool. So let me know your thoughts. If there's another one of these kinds of videos you'd like to see me do, use the comment section below and let me know. And what would you add? My fellow Ohioans speak out uh, or people from other places who have visited Ohio. What was your experience like? What did you like? What did you not like? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.